Hi, everyone, and welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in global connectivity, real estate, and the networks within. I'm Barb Mitchell, Executive VP and Managing Director here at JSA, and today we're exploring, exploring sustainability in the backup power industry with Nicole uh, Dirksidey, Global Category Director, Large Power at Kohler Energy. Nicole, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Barb. Happy to be here. Yeah, we're excited to talk to you. We always love to talk to the team at Kohler Energy, uh, who, of course, is not only a leader in backup power space, but also a pioneer when it comes to renewable energy. And that's really going to be largely the focus of our conversation today. So I was just hoping we could jump right in and talk about some recent initiatives uh, over at Kohler Energy and what inspired the team there to introduce the first environmental declaration for a generating set in mission critical markets. It's a bit of a mouthful, <laughs> Nicole, but could you tell, take us through that a little bit? Absolutely. It is a mouthful. Um, that's why we like to shorten it to PEP EcoPass for or Product Environmental um, Profile, looking at the, the carbon footprint of the product. And for us, it was really important, uh, right, sustainability and understanding the carbon footprint of our product and the use of our product has been not only a focus for us for many years at Kohler and, it's, and we've done design for environment to get our products more eco-friendly. Uh, it's also a very, very large topic with our customers, right? And the challenge we're all facing going forward. So we took on the initiative a while ago to say, how can we make sure we have validated, clearly articulated uh, data we can provide our customers so that they can make decisions um, and really uh, trying to avoid confusion or trying to hide information. Um, so doing the environmental product declaration was right our first step into having that full transparency of looking at the carbon footprint of our product. Yeah, and I mean, it's so important. I think this is, we're seeing this bubble up in so many conversations in so many different ways in our industry. Can you take us through the environmental benefits of the PEP Eco Passport and, and specifically, what does this mean for data center operators? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, right, but data center operators, when they're looking, right, they're, they're having to measure the carbon impact of the facility, right? That includes everything. It includes the concrete they pour, the steel they use, but the, the, the backup gen set is, is another component that's a part of that. And right, they're looking at how can they reduce that, right? They have goals and targets to, to reduce as well. And to be able to do that, they need to understand not only where it is today, but one of the things we see with the, uh, the Pepico Passport, it also now starts to give us all a path on how do we continue to reduce it. So when I look at it for, for the gen set, yes, it's going to look at, right, when a gen set's running, what's the carbon footprint? But it also looks at what it takes for us to manufacture it, um, uh, end of life cycle, when it's done and what can be recycled, how does all that work? So it's really meant to be kind of cradle to, to grave or another cradle and, and have a measurement so you can make decisions. And I know, right, one of the things we look at and we talk about a lot here at Kohler is HVO. And so we have it set up where you can find out the that carbon footprint of running fossil diesel, and then you can do the same and have it run as HVO and see that reduction and help you know if you want to make an impact to your carbon footprint of your data center, if you're able to secure HVO um, and maybe even only partially secure HVO, right, what that impact is to, to bring those reductions. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's, we were, um, I was wanting to ask you a little bit more about HVO and just how it's been integrated into the KD series generators. So I don't know if you can more specifically even just sort of add to what you were already saying on that. Sure. So our, our all of our diesel generators from, from Kohler Energy will run on HVO. KD series is our primary uh, pro product that we have um, for all of our large diesel needs. So we actually start uh, in the US at a KD 700, so 700 kilowatt. In the uh, rest of the world, we start 800 kVA, right? And we go all the way up to four megawatt or 4.5 um, mega kVA. So it's uh, our, our product that we've introduced back in 2016, 2017, and really had in mind with that as a new engine development back then, right? A focus on how do we optimize and really have the best performing gen set. And part of that is that, that ability to run on HBO and not have any performance degradation. 
So it gives the customers a lot of flexibility for that fuel usage. Um, it also is very fuel efficient, right? So we just want to use less fuel to begin with. Now, I, I mean, uh, there's all of these innovations and initiatives and um, integrations into product sets that, that you've started to talk about here. But I know that there are other initiatives that Kohler Energy has introduced to expand the company's environmental mm -hmm. declaration. One of those, I think, is Conscious Care. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that program and, and any others and the significance? Yeah. So back in uh, 2023, we launched our Kohler Conscious Care, a sustainable maintenance program focused on our KD series gen sets, as I mentioned, right, when we look at optimizing and really having efficiency with those those gen sets, uh, starting with the, the base engine, we're able to design that in such a way um, that we can now do, if you want to write, we'll say in the, in the gen set industry, do a monthly loaded test on your gen set right? Kind of confirming everything is working. Uh, and with the conscious care, we're now saying, well, you could do your monthly test as no load. So you save on a lot of fuel. So not only is it the carbon, but it's the cost, right? And the cost to run that. Uh, you can even extend it as far as four months. Uh, so only run your gen set every four months, right? Because we have the, the reliability, we have the, the intelligence built into that gen set to be able to do that. And what's a really nice link into what we did with the, the Pepico Passport and having that environmental product declaration, it pointed out for us future areas where we should focus, right? What are the highest drivers for carbon footprint for the full life cycle of our product usage, right? And some of those are, right, if it's in the cold weather and it has a, a heater, like a block heater, that's plugged in 24 seven drawing power. Um, we have oils, right? We, could, we have consumables in these oils and they get, uh, uh, and they they tend to be high carbon, and and kind of and fossil based. So now we're looking at how do we continue to expand our conscious care offerings, some things we have coming out um, in the coming months and years of of further reducing those footprints. And it's a really nice combination of taking that Pepico passport and what we're we've learned, and further driving down that carbon footprint of the product with offerings. It's always I. I just love talking to, to, to you and folks at Kohler Energy. You, you take such a leadership role in, in really driving the future of sustainable power solutions for everything mission critical, you know, mission critical applications and, and you know, especially for the data center space and, and others. But what else is on the horizon? I feel like there's already so much that we've talked about. But Yeah, I think, right, it's, for me, it's twofold. And I've, right we'll say we always have to look at the technologies today and what are the steps we can do today things like hbo conscious care right having that environmental product declaration and finding things so we can use today's technologies and continue to drive down right that carbon footprint and have a more sustainable solution and that's that's today without really adding risk and then we want to look at the future we want to look at those new technologies and one of them that we're that we're focused on and doing a lot of development is around hydrogen fuel cells and we see a lot of similarities to uh, standby diesel genset with the PEM fuel cell and that performance. So, right, as we can build out the infrastructure for hydrogen, avail hydrogen availability and build out, right, just the usage of hydrogen fuel cells to drive down that total cost, we really see that as a nice replacement for backup diesel gensets without somebody having to redesign their entire architecture and their system. Because all these technologies have pros and cons and you want to capitalize on the pros and make other design considerations to right, overcome the cons. And when it's a completely different technology with a completely different pros and cons from the current, right, you can absolutely design to that, but there's more risk and right, there's a lot more change and then it takes more time. So right, one of the things we focus on is the hydrogen fuel cell because we see so many similarities and feel it can be a drop in, similar drop in replacement in the future. Yeah. Nicole, thank you so much. I mean, these, I feel like these, um, you know, interviews always go so quickly and there's so much to talk about. Uh, we only had a few minutes here together today, but, you know, for folks that want to find out more about Kohler Energy, I know that we have a QR code on the screen. People can go ahead and scan that. Uh, it will take you to the website. Um, is there anything else, Nicole, that you'd like to add um, as we as we leave here? Yeah, I'd say, right, it's exciting as we look at what the future holds, but I, right, make sure everybody's looking at what's your next step right now that can make a difference and don't ignore the small changes that can have a very big impact quickly. Yeah.
Amazing. What yeah. amazing final words. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nicole, for joining us today. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA podcasts. Until next time.